I want to have more of a discussion this week more than I want to have a lesson. And one of the reasons that I want to have a discussion is because um, I, I've noticed even at school uh, where, I'm, where I'm working now, um, it's become a very real thing. Um, especially when you, you guys see it on TV and it almost doesn't really affect you personally or at an individual level. But kind of where it, when it hits home somewhat, it changes things or it should or it should at least make you think. Like, what the heck? Like, what just happened, right? Um, and then what I'm talking about is with this Texas shooter thing. Okay? Like, you guys heard about it, right? Yeah. yeah. Anyone here not hear about it? Okay. We see it on TV, right? I mean, the biggest one we ever had, and the biggest one they had was, was um, not that school, not church, but um, was Columbine, right? And the reason Columbine was so big was because the police department... The way that they use tactical, um, the way that their tactics worked were that when there was an active shooter or there is an active shooter, the police department was trained to contain the area and not go in until they can find some sort of contact or until they're able to resolve it with a large group to go in. That's the way they used to work. That's why Columbine was so effective. Because that's the way they work. So when, when the two gentlemen were, were shooting up the school, the school was surrounded by police officers. But none of them went in. Which made it even more effective for the shooter to actually kill more people. I mean, they were in there for a while. I don't know if you guys remember Columbine. Do you, anyone? Yeah. No? Okay, wow. It's been that long, right? Oh, holy cow. I don't remember it. Oh, I, heard it. It. I, I haven't heard the news. I, I, I don't remember seeing it on the news. What? No. I forget the date. Uh, can, you, can you tell me the date? So Columbine, Columbine High School was a high school where two gentlemen, and I forget their names. This is a while. I can't Dylan. believe it. So they went into the school. They, 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 they called themselves the trench coach, trench coat mafia. They, they, they got guns, and they were well-armed. 1999. 1999. Wow, I can't believe it's been that long. Oh, come on. I wouldn't remember that. Wow. wow. I can't believe it's been that long. So what, that was one of the most effective and most bloody shooting that has existed. This actually started alarming, or it was the most alarming shootings that, that existed in, in probably our, 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 our school history. And this was in 99. I remember teaching on this when it happened. And what happened is they went in and they, they, they started just shooting kids. They had AKs, they had a bunch of guns, and they were just shooting. And, and they were walking around making fun of people. They targeted specific people. Uh, it was like jocks and cheerleaders and stuff like that. Uh, and, and some Christians. And, and there were some testimonies of faith that came about it. And it was very active. And, and it happened, right? And as the years go by, you hear more of it. You know, the, 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 the Virginia Tech, the, the school in, uh, I think it was uh, Atlanta, um, and now Texas, right? And we're talking, what, 18 years later, it, it's been worse than it's ever been. And it's worse to the point where I, I sat in a meeting a couple of weeks ago where the police officers came to our school and we went through a process of um, what they call an active shooter response. And, and the police officer says, you're more likely to be, you're 3,000% more likely to be killed or one of your students to be killed by an active shooter than you are by a fire or by an earthquake drill that you have every year. The last kid that died from an earthquake or a fire in the school was in 1950. And yet we have those drills all the time, right? Oh, you did when you were in school. Especially in California, you have the earthquake drills. In the East Coast, you don't have those. Because earthquakes aren't a thing. Tornadoes are. Tornadoes are. But, it, and it happens, and, and, and I'm sitting in there, I'm like, this is just, it's this real, right? We're like, I'm at school, and they're teaching us what to do when an active shooter comes and steps on our property. What do we do with the kids? Middle schoolers, right? And then we hear the Texas thing. It hits home a little bit. I, and I think it hits home because you, you ask the question, 
Could it happen to us? Now, what do you think? I, I mean, are we, are we, are we, are we exempt from this? Could the possibility exist? And it's a church, right? For, for such a long time, like, churches have and have been still, have been respected for the most part. We, this church is not in a good neighborhood. We know that, right? <laughs> like, we're well aware of that. But no one breaks in. No one steals anything. And the neighborhood knows. They hear us, right? They, they, I, we leave the doors wide open. They see what we have on stage. It's impossible that they don't hear the instruments that we have. It seems like there's some sort of respect that still exists for our churches. I remember one day I was working with, I was, we were working here, and the guy, he was riding his bike, and he had this speaker. <laughs> it's going in California. Uh, he hooked up to his bike with a subwoofer. Right? He's riding his bike, and there's a subwoofer behind him, and he's blasting his music. And as he's approaching the church, he looks at me, and, and he turns it down. And when he got here, he turned it back up. Why? Even in cars. Right? Even in it, there's still this, this 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 respect that exists in churches. There's still even maybe if you don't even agree with it or you, you don't like it or you still respect it because there's something about churches. But it's it's changing. It, it's not the same anymore. There was a time, at least when I was growing up, but I had a lot of friends who were African American who didn't mess with the the whole demons and and and, and all this devil stuff. And nowadays, the African American community dabbles in it, which is surprising to me. The African American community has been the ones that really have a, such a high respect for church. I mean, the ones have you seen an African American church how they dress to go to church? It's a fashion show. Every Saturday, it's a, they got the hats and the ties and the suits because there's just disrespectful. There is disrespectful. And then Sunday we have a young man who goes into a church and starts shooting up people. Twenty-seven dead, twenty-eight, twenty-seven injured, something like that. Are, are we exempt from it? Do we... Should we worry about it? Should we just... You know, say, oh, well. Like, what do we do? Or what do we think or what do we say? Well, what is it that we... How should we react to something like this? Liz posted a... And let me let me say this before before I continue. I don't want to leave it like that either. Eighty five percent of these shootings that have existed in churches, eighty five percent have to do with domestic issues that exist in the church, and this in particular was also one of those. Okay, there was some domestic issue with the shooter, and with uh, somebody in the church. Domestic means family or, or marital or spousal problems. Right? Um, come on. Oh. So, 85% of the shootings that exist um, usually have to do with some domestic issue. And this in particular was a domestic issue. It was, it was a problem that was existing. He came in and he started shooting people. For the most part, most of the most of the shootings that do occur in churches tend to be in the parking lots. They don't tend to be inside a service or while the service is happening. That, that's just like a almost a, a percentage or, or a fact. So it's not that everyone is looking to come in and like just shoot people in the church. That, that, that's at least that's not what it's come to. They seek out a particular individual or something or someone that they're looking to revenge and everyone else is just collateral damage. Okay. So Liz posted a question to me this week. She said, 
she was reading on it, she, she, was, she was talking about it, um, and she said, as a, there are some churches whose pastor, and I want to hear what you have to say about this, whose pastors are having their deacons and ushers who guard, the, who stand at the door, carry weapons. Concealed weapons. Concealed weapons. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> it, it's it's an interesting. It's gonna be an interesting discussion if, if we if you guys want to argue because it's we can argue both sides of it. Okay. So let me hear. It. <laughs> I can't see by the reaction. Oh, I definitely there's... see Javier. Oh, okay, Javier. So think about it this way. David is at one door, right? David Hernandez is at one door. I can see that. I have Sammy in the back <laughs> with with Big Javier. Same right? Double gloss. Oh man, that's <laughs> want to come in after that. So as a church, uh, as a pastor, <laughs> should I be concerned with my congregation to the point where I, I do this and I ask my deacons and ushers to carry? Or should we? No. I don't think the elders would <laughs> no. Actually, surprisingly enough, Liz's grandma said As that it's one. not a bad idea. As As one. One. <laughs> she wouldn't be as to it. That's why it's a CCP. You guys don't tell what you guys are carrying. So, what do you think? What is if what what? Why yes and why no? I say no. Why? Out of respect. For what? So I, the church. The church. Temple. For God, for everything. I feel like it sets a bad image. But would anyone know? <laughs> like, besides us? They'll get around. They would definitely get around. You guys wouldn't even know, really. But I'm I mean, you gotta talk about it right now. Come on, Avery. 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 Guns or like knives? No, like, no, guns. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's, 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 and it goes more to like, I, well, first of all, I'm not going to do it, okay? That, that's first of all, I'm not doing it. We but, can't, first of all. Like, <laughs> but like these Texas churches, right? Yeah, that's Texas. I bet. Do you think that what they're doing, like, it's justifiable? That they're doing it now that that happened? No. I think I it's think their fear. Yeah, I would. I think their fear is taking over. Okay. You're saying like if we think it's wrong they're doing it now. Uh, tell me, I don't, I don't know. What do you think? I guess given yeah. the circumstance after that situation, it's understanding why they would. Yeah. Allow okay. it. JC, Juan Carlos. I just I don't think I don't think I, I know you said you were not gonna do it. I don't know why, but I don't think we should do it either. Simply because. That's kind of not trusting in God. Like we have to defend ourselves when we have a defender greater than everybody else. And if that was God's plan, then you know we can only hope and trust in God. Okay. But that's always going to be the case, though. With but everything. With everything. But where do we draw the line to where God has given us the opportunity or the um, the position where we can defend ourselves? Because there has to be. Well, we we were some. we noticed that that was a domestic thing, right? I mean, how many of us know, really know that there's someone in here that is has something against one of us that is gonna do something to violate? Her? It just doesn't. If it we doesn't if we love each other, really that, that we're taken care of. But no. do you think that that guy who's think someone random, is random is gonna come? If you never know. So like, random um, with all of these. Yeah. Yeah. That's just fear. And it's taken over. The thing is, is that that's the world that we're living in today. So you're gonna let it take over. No, but like one of the questions that was posed with this particular shooting was, what if somebody in that church would have had protection? They could have maybe stopped the shooter to where it's less damage, less deaths. That's actually Trump's argument. <clears throat> that, and I hate to bring it up, but somebody asked him, he said, are you going to impose policies now about these gun movements? And Trump says, which... I'm not I'm not yes or no okay here. I'm just telling you what he said because it was a good argument <laughs> he said if someone in that church did not have a gun there would have been more dead 
I mean, it's a great argument. I'm not saying I agree with it, okay? I'm not saying I agree or disagree with it, but that's a heck of an argument. So at what point is the question, at what point is it, does it, is it, is it always God's responsibility or do I have some responsibility as well? If God is asking me to move, do I, if God is asking me to do something, do I have to move my feet or is God going to move my feet for me? I mean, so where, where can we draw a line or should we draw a line? Where do we stand on this? I think it's also a question of are, are men responsible for protecting women and children? Okay, if that's the case, <laughs> yeah, it's all, all of us, all of us, all, all, you know, that's a, and the, most people would say, yes, men are responsible for protecting their women and children. So when you are faced with a crazy guy, violent, whatever, then are we to use whatever means necessary to protect our women and children? I have a question. Would you guys be... Um, open to the idea of having a weapon, a gun, in your homes? Like, is that something that you would be open to? So yes. I've been wanting for a while since we lived, it's only, well, it was only us three. I want, like, I literally asked my dad, can, like, can we go to a shooting range, get my license, and get a gun? And then he's like, if you had a gun, if someone tried to come in, would you have, like, the guts to shoot someone? Yeah. And, like, that's kind of what off me because I'm like I don't think I have the guts to shoot someone like I've held a gun and it makes me like quiver that thing is so it's scary like that thing can kill someone yeah. so I don't know I feel like if we had a, a gun here at church <clears throat> like if people weren't carrying it I feel like that would be fine if it was like locked up somewhere that can be accessible to certain people but not to everyone I feel like that would be fine, but if someone to be carrying, like the deacon to be carrying that gun, like just on their belt, I feel like that would just make it worse. Because it's like, <laughs> yeah, but even people I think it's, I think it's I a bad know. idea. Really bad. <laughs> so, so to that notion, right? Like, and that's fine. Like, because if it's a bad idea, okay, and this is this is where it gets interesting, okay? Because for example, if it's a bad idea, then you have to tell me where my responsibility stops, or up to which point. Do I just throw my hands up? And the other question is, if I do have to get a gun, or if I am going to have a gun, okay, does that mean that my faith, or I am not trusting in God as much as I need to? Because that's where we're overlapping. That's, that's the, the question where we, where does, if, if, if having a gun is a bad idea, then where does my responsibility begin or end? Really and if I do have one, does that indicate, or is it an indicator, that I am not trusting 100% in God? Mm. You see where the diff you see where the problem is. Go ahead. I think I think um, I think there's other measures that you could take that aren't as extreme as having weapons, like how you're saying that schools have drills. Like we could go through drills or. We could like <laughs> just the usual do other things like like lock doors during service and stuff like that. Like so on that account, right? And you guys don't know this, right? And and I I told Liz this. You guys know that I locked the front door. Yeah. Okay. The reason, one of the biggest reasons I do that. And this is I've never said this. I just did it. Is because I want to control who comes through the doors. Because I don't know who's coming through them. It's it's a big reason. One of the reasons I locked that door for a while now is because you never know. Unfortunately, my deacons would be the first ones to be hurt. Like, and I think about that. Like, as a pastor, you have to think about that. So my 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 question is, or my my dilemma is, where do I draw a line? Or is it me saying, I'm going to carry a gun and God, you do the rest? Or God, just do the rest and I'm going to continue on what I'm doing? I know it's kind of like bringing a knife to a gunfight, but how about tasers? Okay. It's better than nothing. They could carry those. 
That's true. We have to be like within a certain range. <laughs> no, a lot of people, a lot of people <laughs> carry tasers. I think, but, like, I think they're what? responsible yes. enough they're getting tasers. Tasers. Okay, <laughs> but, so they're getting caught because they're Okay, so the whole difference to you is killing somebody? Yes, I don't, I don't, I don't think we should take anybody's so, life. Okay, but what if it's just to deter him from doing more? You can shoot them in the arm. And that's what I'm saying. If but we, if, who, if who's a can... trained specialist that can do a precise shot in the middle? No, I know, moment. but like, I mean... Like, I'm going to shoot you in your kneecap right now. Like, no, oh, stay still. <laughs> Stuff, you have to look at the stay bigger, the bigger <laughs> question. It's like at that moment, who's trained enough to take a shot or or, or have it in them to, to do it? So, and it's not completely a full matter of okay, let's figure out a way we're gonna do this. Okay, it's not so much about that. Okay, like, okay, let's let's uh, you know, it, it's the principle of the idea. It's the idea of 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 having should we do something where we should protect ourselves. Like this church, right? I don't know the details of the church. I don't know much about it. I know that I don't know anything about them actually. But it's a church. Do they trust in God? Of course they do. They worship us. Yeah. Are, are they different than us? Not really. Right, so does that mean that somebody walks into our church and they just go at it? What does that say about and this is where I, this is where I'm struggling with? What does it say about my faith if I am going to take measures to protect myself? But I don't think it really says much about your faith. Like you're you have less faith because you want to protect yourself. Right. So, I mean, because I, obviously, what I want to do in my career is become a cop, and it consists of carrying a weapon, mm -hmm. and that's something my mom throws in my face, like, she reminds me every single time that I'm a child of God, and I shouldn't be having a weapon because that, down the line of the career, you supposed to shoot to kill, but it's not like we're going to get the weapons and go and kill anybody, it's protecting yourself. But that's, you can't use that as a reference. Because that <laughs> job, you already know what you're getting yourself into. Criminally controlling the population. So but it's still the same no, thing. No, no, it's no. still we're a not, gun and it's still we're killing here somebody. Criminally <laughs> control <laughs> anything. We're here afraid. Yeah, yeah, but unfortunately, this unfortunately, is the world that happen. we're living things in today. Happen. Where churches are getting uses shot at. Churches, churches as, uh, as, as a time message. Time. It's like, hey, okay, <laughs> go ahead, Satan. Let's go uh, shake this place up. Let's see how my Christians react. Just like Job, like anything else. Mm. Hold on. Uh, Jasmine, Jesse, then Jerson. Isn't that like where the difference between being precautious is, though? Like, you're not buying a gun because you have intentions to kill somebody today. It's more like, I have this gun because I want to be precautious. Yeah. You know, like my mom all the time, like when I'm out past like 10, right? My mom will be like, why are you putting yourself in danger? And then I'll be like, don't you believe in God, Mom? And then she'll be yeah. like, yeah, but that's where you should be precautious. There's a difference. I feel like this would be the only situation where that would apply. Okay, I can see that. Jesse? Um, so I, I, don't know, I don't like this uh, concept that we're bringing up because um, let's change it. Like, um, instead of bringing a gun, like, let's say my Bible, you know, because this is my uh, weapon, my... Uh, it's like, if, if I don't carry this around, like, is God going to provide the knowledge, the wisdom, his word to me? Like, is he going to provide that if I don't be carrying my Bible around? Like, is God going to do everything for me? Or do I have to read and, you know, I have to pray and I have to get into his word? Like, um, I, don't, I don't know if God's going to provide everything for me if I'm not, like, completely surrendered in um, what he wants me to do. And like be with okay so it's like I don't know I just changed the uh, the weapon in a sense like to, to have a gun doesn't mean like okay um, I don't trust God because I have a gun you know yeah it's just um, you know like a protection state you know some people do carry guns they never use they never um, tend to shoot anybody but it's just like a protection okay um, so like for example, Jarlan says she wants to be a cop. And like, what's the cop's motto? They say to serve and protect. 
it's not it's not so much about self because if when it, if the conversation turns about self defense, then then like I don't care if I die, if I don't I don't care if I get killed, but if it's about protecting my kids, mm. then that's a totally different conversation. Mm. The cops don't carry guns for self defense; they carry guns to protect the public, right? To stop further violence. You know, when people are out to kill, the Bible itself says whoever kills a person forfeits his own life. If you kill a man or a woman, you are forfeiting your, your own life. And, and so man has the right to take your life because you took a life. Mm. You know, that's, that's in the Bible. And, mm. and Jesus never changed that. You know, he, he, he told the, the Roman guards, quit your job. He didn't tell them, quit your job, quit what you're doing. And Paul says, the, you know, the, um, how do you put it? Um, the authority or the powers carry a sword, not in vain. Meaning that they, uh, you know, the, whoever's in control, the governing authority, they have the right to carry lethal weapons to protect, you know, that's like one of the roles of government. Um, so it, it's always about protecting the innocent. It's always about protecting, um, you know, or stopping further violence. Because if it just it's, if it's just about ourselves, then yeah, it's a different conversation. Okay. And that goes back to like what I was trying to say. Like, if you're open to the idea of having a gun in your home for self protection, why not be open to the idea of having a gun in church where you're protecting everybody else? Um, and I'm not for this, but I'm not completely against it either. It's just something that we've been discussing and I'm like in the middle about, but like it goes back to something as simple as going to the doctor. You know, do we rely completely on God to heal us or does he provide doctors so we can go to so they can help us? Like wouldn't it kind of go hand in hand with this? I don't know. I mean, uh, this this question is a little morbid, right? But it, it, it I want you to be honest, and I want you to participate, okay, when I ask it, all right? How many of you are afraid to die? I think I'm afraid of the way I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm not so much afraid, like, yeah. dying, it's more of the way. So the rest of you aren't really afraid to die? I'm more afraid of, afraid of eternity. I can't imagine that. That's why. Yeah. Eternity, like I can't shower for eternity. Dang. <laughs> 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 you can't what? Yeah, I know that's what I heard. I was like, what? Shower? Yeah, oh, that's so no way. I'm not gonna eat for eternity. That's the greatest fear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's shower for eternity. Eating shower. So, and if we tie it in, if we tie it into this whole thing, right? If, if. if I lean more on the side of I don't want to carry a gun I don't want to have a gun because at least to me and I'm not saying this is general this is the way you should believe it speaks volumes to me of my faith and my trust it, it just does I, I don't know why it just does right um, because I, I have trust in God I have complete trust in God that no matter what comes no matter what it is he signed off on it. I mean, really. And if that's my moment to go, then that's my moment to go. I, I and if that's what God desires from me, at that moment in time to accept the faith that I have or the faith that I have, then I'm I'm going to. This is this is me. Okay. And I think a lot of the times where we don't want to accept it is because we're afraid what happens after death look the, like the bible it's, it's it's amazing like the bible how it says it like he says in the blinking of an eye right and i don't know if you like in the blinking of an eye you will stand before judgment when you die do you know what that means that means that when you close your eyes to die you literally you blink and you open them to a judgment. 
you listen, you don't you don't feel that you're dead. It's not like you're dead and you're like, oh man, I've been dead forever. <laughs> no. Like death is it's instant. The people that died four thousand years ago, to them, like they just blinked their eyes, their eye, and opened them. And we're all gonna open them at the same time. And it's gonna feel like to all of us, it's like that. Do you understand that? Like death, like judgment is in the blink of an eye. Like no matter when you lived, how long ago to now, when you close your eyes to die. Whatever death you're going to die, whatever sickness it is, however old you're, and you close them, when you open them, when you blink, you stand before a creator. And I hate to be one of those people who, who, who don't trust or don't believe there's anything else because it says that when you die, you will open them to a judgment and you will stand before God and you will be held accountable for who you were. So if that is my faith, at least me personally, I guess I would just accept it. This is my faith. And I don't know about it, though. Like, I don't know how I feel about that. Would I want to protect like, the church? Of course. Like, I, 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 I do anything to protect the church. I do anything to, like, to make sure everyone's okay. But I, I don't know, and, and if the answer is no, we need to protect ourselves, then where do we draw the line of my responsibility and God's responsibility? And I think that's the struggle. That's the concept that, that's very difficult to, to, to grasp and deal with. Like, I, I don't want to belittle any church or anyone by what's happened this weekend, this past weekend. The circumstances, I can't even begin to imagine what these churches are going through, especially the churches in the area. I, I can't. Uh, but is this is just me as, as a personal idea of how I feel about it. But we're not exempt to this. Look, uh, let's, let's read a couple verses and we're going to end with that. Um, uh, give, me, give me Matthew 10, 22. Uh, Liz, give me Matthew 24, 9. Juan Carlos, Luke 21, 12. Uh, Jesse, Luke 21, 17. And then, uh, you have your Bible? Me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, give me John 15, 18 to 21. Go ahead, Kimmy. Okay, so Matthew 10, 22, right? Mm-hmm. And it says, you will be hated by all men for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. You will be hated by who, Kimmy? Everybody. Everyone. For whose sake? Jesus. For Jesus' sake. What's the next one? 24-9. Um, for 24-9, then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. Matthew, Luke 21-12. It says, uh, but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up from up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. 21.17. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. And John. Uh, if the world hates you, understand that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world would love you as its own. However, because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of it, the world hates you. Remember the word I spoke to you. A slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But they will do all these things to you. But they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they don't know the one who sent me. At no point does Jesus ever, ever, um, offers us safety. safety. Uh, there's a verse that says, For I send you like, like sheep amongst the wolves. <laughs> At no point does it say, this is, you're under my protection and and then like everything is going to be completely great from now on and you will suffer nothing. He promises blessings, right? He does. He, he does 
keep us from harm, but it doesn't mean harm cannot reach us. It, we live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world. And the world is going to do what the world does best. Destroy. Especially destroy those things which are holy and righteous. The best thing we can do is first of all accept that we will be hated, we will be flogged, we will be killed. We will suffer for his name. We will. The only question is are we going to be ready? I don't know if uh, when that shooter came in and those people that were there, they thought, like, I'm gonna, I'm dying for his name's sake, or whether the intention of the shooter was like, I'm mad at that one person, and that's the reason why you're all dying. But whatever it is, it's always a joy to die for the Lord, because we'll see him. So whether that's his decision or not, we, I don't think we should be holding our security to like completely to our responsibility. If God wants us with him, he'll take us. Yeah. Uh, so one thing I'd like to add on what you said is um, Brian Houston said that um, no, nowhere does he provide safety, like you were saying. But in fact, um, if we're following God um, and we're doing right, we're going to face opposition in what we uh, believe and what we face. Like, we're going to want a blessing, but there's going to be opposition. But if you go through the opposition, the blessing will come afterwards. So I'll, I'll, I'll close with this. Okay. Look, dying for God, that's easy. That's easy. Living. Living for God. That's hard. That's hard. That takes everything you have. But dying... It's over in an instant. Living. That's the thing. To live for God. That's the hard part. Let's stand and pray. <laughs>